I'm Oliver Crisp. I teach at Fuller Theological Seminary in California. And uh, with me today are Kevin Diller, who teaches at Taylor University in Indiana, Marilyn McCord Adams, who's at Rutgers, and uh, Douglas Headley, who teaches at the University of Cambridge in England. And we're going to be talking this afternoon about the topic of faith and reason. Now, faith and reason is a, a, a complex uh, topic. There are lots of different aspects to it. But perhaps, Kevin, you could start us off by thinking about what the relationship between faith and reason is, or maybe even by thinking about the definitions of what is faith and what are, what is reason? What do we mean by those two yeah. things when we talk about this? Yeah, that's good. So I think these are, these are multiply ambiguous terms, so we use them in very different ways. And sometimes that um, serves to create uh, confusion or maybe even heighten a sense of, of uh, conflict or competition between the two. But, uh, you know, faith, a wide range of things uh, elicited there, certainly trust, confidence, uh, belief. But oftentimes we, we talk about faith as if it is a way of believing things. Uh, so we'll say something like, um, well, I, I'll, I'll believe that on faith, or I'll take that on faith. Um, now, when we use faith in that way, uh, we're really saying something like, well, um, whatever's proposed for belief actually seems kind of crazy to me. Um, counterintuitive, uh, maybe even my reason suggests that it's n not the wise thing to believe, but I'm going to take it on faith, so I'm just going to uh, believe it anyway. And perhaps that indicates a kind of, maybe a kind of confidence in whatever the source of that, that belief is, but it tempts us to think of faith and reason as two different ways of believing things that, that are, in, are in conflict. Um, there's many other ways of using faith as well. I think sometimes we use faith just to indicate starting assumptions, like faith assumptions. Mm. These are things that uh, we can't um, uh, address or ground uh, with an argument. Um, now, in, in the Christian tradition, uh, this word is often you know, sort of in, in the genitive or it's attended with a preposition like in, so you have faith in. Um, and that, I think, is um, sort of indicates that uh, faith is faith in, at least in Christian tradition, sort of fundamentally in a person. Um, and uh, that you know, generates the ground somehow in a, in a relationship with God that God has established, uh, the ground out of which there might be things that one comes to believe on the basis of the confidence uh, in a person or in God's sort of establishing a, a starting point. Um, reason, maybe just quickly, also has a wide range of senses, you know, a very narrow uh, sense of reason maybe just has to do with our analytic function, you know, sort of uh, what we do with logic and the relationship between propositions. Hmm. Sometimes, you know, with an article A reason, this would be uh, an explanation or a ground for things. Um, or maybe just more broadly, reason could just refer to all of our cognitive endowments. Um, uh, so depending on how you use, use the terms, that's going to change some things in the, yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Marilyn, did you you said you had a, perhaps a rather non-standard approach well, to these things? Well, I think it picks up on something you were saying at the end about faith in a person. The more I've thought about this issue about faith and reason, it seemed to me that we get hung up about, well, can you have faith that pee while having reasons that pee or being interested in reasons that pee? But to me, more and more, it seems to me that faith is a, is a kind of life posture. It's really a way of being in the world in relation to God something like marriage, which is for me a way of being in the world in relation to Bob. And I assume that it makes a difference to both of them that I'm a rational being and that I uh, function, re reasoning is one of the ways I function as a person and that uh, birds and worms would have a different fascination for each of them, right? And of course I have reasons for thinking that um, each of them will behave in relation to me in one way rather than another. And when expectations are disappointed, one can have a tiff and work it through and so forth. Um, um, and of course, as a philosopher, I might get interested in, in the problem of solipsism and come up with a theory about um, that there are minds other than my own and so on and so forth and how I could know that. And in relation to God, I can come up with reasons for thinking that God exists and so on. But to me, that's not where faith, faith starts or the primary way that faith and reason are really related to one another. It, it has to do with the fact that um, um, faith is a relation, uh, a posture of, of rational beings in relation to one another. And maybe by analogy, I'm not a pet person, but maybe you think 
your dog is faithful too or something, but, uh, but that would be an extension. Hmm. Douglas, um, <coughs> often faith and reason are pitted against one another. You know, people say, well, how can you, uh, how can you have faith if you're a reasonable person or how can faith be reasonable? Aren't these two things antithetical in some way? Um, having got some grip on maybe what uh, faith is and, and what reason is, um, is, there, is it the case that these two are sort of at loggerheads with one another? I mean, do you think that there are ways in which faith can be reasonable or a reasonable, reasonable person can be faithful? How, those, how do those things maybe interact? Well, perhaps if I can just offer two examples. Uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge once described faith as fidelity to one's own being, but meaning one's own being in relation to God. Um, which would be an interesting way of construing faith in um, the manner just described in terms of a personal commitment. Um, the other example I would use would be in the letter to Hebrews where faith is not contrasted with reason but with sight. Mm. We are mm. finite mm. creatures, our cognitive capacities <coughs> are limited um, and so I think uh, both the Coleridge definition and the letter to Hebrews um, give us some uh, intriguing instances of ways in which we might think of faith and reason as related in a more nuanced manner mm -hmm. than um, some dogmatic theologians on the one hand or dogmatic atheists on the other might conceive the relationship. So does, is faith something that falls short of reason then? Well, I just, just sort of uh, <coughs> want to pick up on that. Uh, so I think that's right, that the contrast between uh, <coughs> faith and sight, not faith and reason. Hmm. Um, so we're, we're told this is the assurance of things, not saying you know, we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, but it, it, there is a, uh, faith is still a, a means of light, um, a means of bringing light. Um, and, and, and also you know, reason is, is also a, a, a light. Um, so there's, there's no sense in which these things need to be seen as, um, as in competition or, or incompatible. Um, now, there is, a, there is a sense in which I suppose that, um, that, that we all have a kind of uh, faith and reason issue if it's uh, the case that one is required to be able to give a reason or an explanation or an argument um, for, um, for what one knows by means of this posture, um, which is a receptivity that's, that's uh, um, enabled in us by God to receive revelation of God. If one is required to be able to sort of give an argument for those things, well, actually, that's, that's going to impinge upon all kinds of beliefs, uh, fundamental, important uh, beliefs that we have, um, the most, maybe one of the most obvious of which is our, our own uh, commitment that's sort of universal, I think, um, that one sort of basically can trust one's own cognitive faculties to, in general, be putting one in touch with truth. That's, not, that, that's a very important belief to have, and if you don't have it, we might think you are a bit paranoid or is it, there might be something wrong. Uh, there must be something that's a little irrational about that, and yet, of course, there's no way in which one could provide an argument for that. Um, because you'd be depending on the very cognitive faculties that were in question. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be unreasonable to provide a reason in that, in that sense, but it's completely reasonable to believe this. So th there's, there shouldn't be a conflict between these two lights, though I think reason will help us to find uh, coherence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it a case of let reason be your guide, as John Locke suggests, or I is it uh, rather more uh, something <coughs> Anselmian, a sort of faith-seeking understanding? way of thinking about the relationship between faith and reason? Well, I suppose that, that I think of it more in terms of faith-seeking understanding. Um, um, yeah, I do. If, you, if you're in a relationship with someone, someone can say, well, why do you trust him? And then you have to give a reason for the faith that is in you, right? And you have to come up with lots of explanations. 
And you can see a lot of what Anselm wrote in that as a sophisticated version of that very thing. Or, you know, faith is the substance of things unseen, but what is the substance? It's not your propositional attitude, it's God and God's word, God's trustworthiness that is the substance of things unseen. That's why you can count on their, their coming to be. That's why Abraham can count on seeing the day, right? It's because God is, God is faithful. And, and so, um, um, yeah, I guess I see them in that connection. Mm, that's helpful. Yes, and that Anselmian thought is linked to an idea we find in Augustine that the heart is restless until mm -hmm. it finds God. And I think this is an aspect of the tradition of philosophical theology that is often neglected. The richer conception of rationality involving the affects involving the, you know, the whole agent. Um, I think that's, that's sometimes neglected and it's uh, an important part of this strand of faith-seeking understanding from Augustine through to Anselm. And, and there, there's something else that Anselm says, or at least I, I believe he does, and Marilyn can, can correct me, but um, so one of his pithy statements he's often accredited with is just, uh, I believe that I may understand, right? Uh, which also, I think, um, tells us something important, or it's an important insight about the relationship between faith and reason, um, in that some of the most basic, and this would be, certainly be uh, true for uh, revealed uh, beliefs that are very fundamental to, um, to many other beliefs, so a lot of other of our beliefs will, will in some how, way be uh, impacted by them or dependent on them, right? Uh, they, they form or shape an interpretive grid for us mm -hmm. um, that enable us to engage uh, reasonably with the world around us. And as a matter of fact, the, the more uh, sort of conducive or appropriate that framework is to, to the reality being engaged with, uh, the more propitious it is, more fruitful it is uh, for, that, for that engagement. So there's a, a dependency of reason on faith there that I think that Anselm saw. I think that for Anselm, it's very important that, that uh, the priority of faith to his um, philosophical theology is partly in the question of, well, what, what posture do you have to be in to be in a position to discover the interesting and deep reasons for the things that we believe? And, and that how, what posture do you have to believe it, to be in to um, ask fruitful questions that will lead you to discoveries? And I think your idea of the interpretive grid that's in the background uh, guiding your questions and um, um, where you reach for answers is, is a helpful one. The, that's interesting. I mean, <coughs> the, in some of the recent uh, philosophical literature on faith and reason, uh, there's been discussion about uh, faith as proposition, propositional attitude or something to do with um, the beliefs that we have. But uh, there have been some people who've suggested that maybe uh, faith is something that um, you come to on the basis of certain sorts of practices, a kind of pragmatic account of faith. It's not that you start from, in an Anselmian way, a, a position of faith and you go towards understanding, but perhaps you do certain things or attend to certain sorts of practices in the hope that faith will follow on the, on the back of that. Mm. I wondered what, um, what you might have to say about that, uh, Douglas. Well, there, there, I think there are two ways of looking at such an account. Um, one, if that is a description of the actual um, life of faith, I think that can be uh, a rich account of what is actually going on in the life of a particular individual. As a justification, however, of beliefs, I mm. don't see how that can, that can work because there are all kinds of instances where you can imagine being involved in certain practices um, can help you reinforce or uh, certain beliefs that you otherwise would not accept or um, repress certain aspects of your knowledge base that you simply do not want to uh, recognize. So I think it depends on how you look at that kind of account as a description of the life of faith, I think that's probably much more accurate than any account which is starting off with 
um, a story about propositions. But in terms of justification, I'm not sure that practice is going to deliver. Well, thank you very much for those contributions. They were very helpful indeed. And thank you for joining us.